Good afternoon. Welcome. I'm Kelly Fernandez. Today, I'm going to talk about how to use online platforms to encourage students to do what they love most, talk about themselves. To get started, I'd like you to go to the following link and make a copy to access materials. While you're doing this, I'd like to share a little information about myself. I have been teaching languages for 27 years. I have taught all levels of Spanish, English language development, and served in leadership roles such as department chair and WASP coordinator. I teach in a tiny community in Northern California. I consider myself a lifelong learner as well as educator. Um, so let's get started. Today, we're going to talk about our role as a coach and the importance of providing lots of student practice. We're going to use Flipgrid for posting and viewing student presentations. And then I'm going to go over the steps for you to design and implement lots of practice uh, and different applications students can use with online platforms. So um, before we go any further, I want to share with you that I used to use speed dating with Google Slides presentations to get my students to talk in class. And because of the COVID-19 uh, online learning era, I have been playing around with using different online applications so that my students can still see each other uh, and present. Um, and that's where Flipgrid has worked out so well. So before we start, I would like to show you a video clip of Ali Raisman. Um, I'll turn down the volume for a second. Most of you know her. She is an incredible. She is an incredible gymnast. She's won three golds, two silvers, and one bronze uh, medal. Here we go. Now, as she performs, I just want you to think of your advanced students who are able to conjugate verbs correctly, to speak fluently, and use correct pronunciation. That's what we all want. Um, so, we need to consider that Allie Raisman was not born an Olympic gymnast. She uh, spent years and years practicing. She started as a novice gymnast. Uh, by the age of 19, she was training six days a week for six hours each day. So let's talk about practice. As language teachers, I think we all know that sometimes this is what practice looks like in the classroom. Now, I just want to remind you as language teachers that it's okay when our students make mistakes. Um, they're going to mispronounce words. They're going to misconjugate a verb, but it's okay. We just need to give them ample practice and provide a safe, space for them to do so. And if we continue to practice, we will see improvement over the course of time. So here I have a learning pyramid. I'd like you to look at this. And I want you to notice that the participatory teaching methods have the higher retention rates. Group discussion is a great way uh, to help students retain information. As you can see, it's 50%. Practice moves up to 75%. 
and teaching others 90%. And I have, I have seen my students during class teach other students. Um, it's harder to do in an online platform, but the practice, I can show you some techniques where we can definitely have our students practicing and in a way teaching other students when they, when they practice correctly. All right, so what I would like to do is start with the Flipgrid presentations because that's our goal. So we're gonna do backwards planning. Right now I'm going to show you my Flipgrid as an educator. This is what I see. And I encourage you to go to an online tutorial for Flipgrid. It just takes a couple of minutes. It's a very easy to use this uh, application. Once you start it, you just give the students a prompt. You tell them what to do. Now, I want to start with a level three student, um, just so you can see what my students can do who've been doing this with me for a couple of years. Um, I'm going to start with Ashlyn. Um, she did a fabulous job. Let me find Ashlyn. Uh, second period. All right, here we go. So, Cerca de Mis Amigos, I featured her presentation. Um, I really enjoyed it. She was able to, and I'm, we're only going to listen to one slide, so let's make sure the volume is up. Hola, clase. Me llamo Ashlyn y hoy voy a hablar acerca de mis amigos Bella, Abby, y Celeste. Great. Para empezar. Okay. So what I want you to note with Ashlyn was that she was able to display her uh, Google presentation and um, her pronunciation was really nice. She introduced herself. She pointed to the pictures. And I'm going to show you one more, Talon. I'm going to show you uh, his. He's been in my class for a few months and he did a nice job as well. Hola, class. Me llamo Talon y hoy voy a hablar acerca de mis amigos. Okay, I'm going to stop it there. What I really like is that he was able to use his presentational slides. Uh, you couldn't see him once he started speaking, um, but this is what you can do with Flipgrid. Now I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to go back up to my Flipgrid, my grids, and I'm going to look for my Spanish one class. Now, again, I have modified this presentation. I used to do speed dating in my classroom, but because of the online learning, I have been forced to come up way, with ways to let my students present to each other in an online platform. So um, my, my Spanish one students had their first presentation um, this past month. They had to prepare some Google Slides. I give them a template to follow, which I'll show you soon. And for the first time, they did really well with their presentations. But um, I do want you to know that they, they make a lot more mistakes when it comes to pronouncing words. Um, but that's okay. I give them lots of positive feedback. So this is Josh. Um, he did a fabulous job. So here we go. Buenos dias, compañeros. Es un placer estar con ustedes. Me llamo Josh y hoy voy a hablar de mis opiniones sobre la ropa. Okay, I'm going to stop that there. Now I'd like to show you um, another presentation, Sophie. Sophie did a phenomenal job with her pronunciation, but she didn't use the uh, screencasting, and that's okay. Buenos días, compañeros. Es un placer estar con ustedes. Me llamo Sophie y hoy voy a hablar de mis opiniones sobre la... I'm going to turn it down for a moment. So I want you to see that this is the teacher view and there's a grading rubric and you can edit it as well. And I gave her a five on her ideas, a five on her performance. And then I was able to write some little notes in here that were really, um, you know, positive. She did a great job with the pronunciation. And then I was able to email her feedback. So with that said, um, I would like to show you one more. I'm going to show you Jade. Um, Jade did a nice job. And, you know, this was the first time the students did this. And they were able to figure out, some of them were able to figure out how to use screen casting with this device. And I went back 
um, later on and played around with it and figured it out myself. Here we are. Here's Jade. Um, oh, let me turn up the volume. Um, I will start it over. Okay, let's turn. Hey, I'm a Jade. I boy hablar de mis opiniones sobre la ropa. Ahora voy más tarde es mi ropa favorita. Aquí en esta foto. Perfect. Okay. And I do want you to see one more thing. I posted my own video for the students. I'm not going to play it, but just a second. Here we go. So there I am. I'm, there we are. So what I would like to do right now is take you um, back to my presentation. It keeps me in line. So I'm going to show you what it looks like, the Flipgrid, for the students. Now, when I give them an assignment with Flipgrid, I put it in Google Classroom, and they have a link there for them to go and record. So I'm going to quickly show you. Uh, let's see here. And my internet is very slow. That's one of the terrible things about this situation we're in. Okay, so um, at, at work, at school, I have very quick internet, but not here. So, all right, here is a flip grid link for my students in Google Classroom. And what I want you to see is that when the students go there, they see pictures of their whole class and then they can click Okay, really quick, let's log in. This first presentation was, oh, this is about their home. This is what I gave them for their final. And I'll make this as quick as I can so you can see this. Um, so the students go, this was their second presentation. And I'm gonna scroll down here in a second. And again, when you as a teacher go here, you can write what you want them to say. And um, just really quick, you can see that the kids can see pictures of themselves and then simply click on the different presentations. So let's go back to my presentation. All right, I would like to show you a Google slide template that I also will post in Google Classroom at the right moment. And um, so it's very simple. I try to keep it as, I try to keep it as short as I can Four slides, I find, is a good number. So um, you just give them instructions. You share you share this in Google Classroom or in Canvas if that's your preferred platform. And uh, the students can write on it. So the first slide says, insert a photo of, of clothes you like. And then below, please look at the speaker notes. Um, that's the important part. The students can write here. Um, they can fill in where it says Mayamo and there's a line they can put their first name. And then it's very, very easy for me to correct. I'm going to the second slide. The second slide says to put a photo of your clothing style. <coughs> and if you look down below in the speaker notes, it says para empezar, voy a hablar del estilo de ropa que me gusta. En general, prefiero. And, you know, that's where they could put los jeans or los vestidos or las botas negras. But they can write three things they want that should describe the picture or the image above. So this is how it works. And I just keep it very simple. Four slides. Make sure that the images correlate to the notes in the speaker box. So what you're doing is you're providing the students language frames um, to support their learning. Okay, so let's go back to our presentation. All right, and so step one, um, before we even think about a presentation, I need to teach them the vocabulary, structures. So I like to create Quizlet activities. I'm going to show you uh, one that I made specific to this presentation. Now my upper level students won't need this um, same support because they've been uh, doing these presentations for years. They, they know how to introduce themselves and greet the class, buenos dias. They know how to say, es un placer estar con ustedes. Um, they also know how to introduce themselves with me llamo. But what I like about the flashcards, I'm going to go through the different uh, things you can do with Quizlet. So the students can do the flashcards and listen to the pronunciation. So I'm going to flip this card 
And then up here in the right hand corner, I can press the audio. El estilo. Great. And then I can move to the next word. In general. In general. Oh, let me flip it. <laughs> in general. There we go. So they have that feature with the flashcards. And then my students can play games. There's a bunch of games on here. I love this game. It's called Combinar. I think it's matching in the English version. And um, it's a great way for students, again, to practice. Buenos dias. Uh, where is that? Good morning. Good day. There you go. Style. El estilo. Where is that? There it is. So I'm giving you a little, um, I'm going to show you all. Uh, where is that? Voy a mostrarles. There we are. All right. I'm going to go back and show you a couple other features. And so you can assign this in Google Classroom with a link. It's very easy. I'm going to uh, assign you learn. Um, so I always have my students do flashcards, games, learn, and a quiz. But you can have them do more things than that. So here I've got aquí. Now. Yay. Oh, oh, esto es lo que debes. Uh, oh, aquí is here. I was thinking ahora. So there we go. I made a mistake. Now you see what happens when you make a mistake. Let's see. Let's do that again. Um, aprender. <laughs> I've been, I've been uh, presenting and practicing a lot today, and I'm getting tired. So let's see here. We are on mi tienda de Europa favorita. So now I have to write this in English. My favorite clothing. Now, one thing I've noticed is if I miss, if I have a capital letter where I shouldn't, I can get it incorrect. So anyways, I'm giving you different ideas of what to do. Um, so let's continue on. Um, you're going to give your students Quizlet activities. You can use it for vocabulary. In this instance, my students were learning about clothing, so I gave them a Quizlet activity with clothing. And then I gave them a Quizlet activity with verbs that they would use if they were shopping. You know, Yo prefiero, cuanto cuesta, things like that. And then I gave them this one with the structure of the um, presentation. So back to the main presentation. First step, post a Quizlet activity. Step two, you're going to post instructions, rubrics, and a Google, Google slide presentation template for the students to see. So um, what I'm going to show you right now are the instructions. And there's two parts I have here, the instructions and the rubric. And um, here are the top search results. In my um, instructions, it says, so I'm going to read this to you. Create a presentation where you talk about clothes with someone. Use Google Slides to describe clothing. You will write in the speaker notes of the template you have been given. Use vocabulary from Lesson 4, Vamos de Compras. Edit your presentation as needed. Insert photos. Turn into Miss Fernandez um, by Friday. So those are the instructions. I'm going to, I'm going to scroll down here. And the rubric here is very, very simple. I give them 10 points for putting images in their presentation. And I allow them to put images um, from the internet. Um, they can take pictures. Like, for example, they could draw pictures and take pictures of those and insert them or pictures of, of um, that are on, on their Google Photos. And then I get them 10 points for using a variety of vocabulary. It's very important that the slides demonstrate their knowledge of different words. For example, they might have los jeans on one slide and los pantalones on the next slide. So there's variation. And then of course they get 10 points for using correct structures. All right, so we have the rubric, the instructions, and then again, I post a copy of the Google Slides presentation with four slides, and they are instructed to insert photos and write in the notes. They are to turn this in to me. Now, let's go back to the presentation, and I will go over step three. Now, step three is for me to correct their work. And unfortunately, the way things work, I have to write on their presentation. Um, there's no way for me to make suggestions. So I just write in the speaker notes and correct it. So then 
I give the students a grade and I tell them to practice their speech aloud using the corrections in the speaker notes. And I ask them to set a goal of presenting from memory and using visuals for at least two slides, two to four slides. And I, I have them review the speaking rubric. So let me show you the presentational speaking rubric. And the idea on this rubric, there's two parts, that they try to speak using the visuals and memorize parts of the language uh, for a perfect score on that. So presenting with visuals versus reading speaker notes. 15, if they can, um, if they do not read their speaker notes and they can use the screencast and, and present. And, um, you know, like a 12, if they occasionally read their speaker notes. And then on the pace, structures and grammar, I give them a 15 if I understand everything they're saying, it's comprehensible and they use correct structures and grammar. Occasionally there might be a mistake, I might take off one or two points. Um, but I am a very generous grader, especially with my level one students because I want them to feel safe and I want them to get lots of positive feedback because I'm coaching them and they're practicing. So let's go back to uh, the next step. That was step three. Let's go to step four. So. My students have practiced, let's, let's re review the steps. They practice vocabulary in Quizlet. And then they have, step two, they have created a uh, first draft of Google Slides that I have corrected and given back to them. Third step, they practice. Now, I am going to create a link to the Flipgrid assignment, and I'm going to um, ask them to record themselves, okay? They're gonna record themselves with the Flipgrid link and post it, okay? Step five, I am going to listen to all of their presentations and I'm gonna grade them and I'm going to give them feedback. I'm going to um, use the rubric that I posted in Google Classroom, where if it appears that they're speaking and know everything from memory or use their visuals and they're very polished, they'll get a 15 out of 15. Um, if they use correct grammar structures, a 15 out of 15. Um, so now, once I've listened, and it's it's key, I wanna show you one thing. I'm gonna take go out of here. I'm gonna go to my educator um, grid, and I want to show you that this is my Spanish one. And do you see how this is my teacher grid and I can go through and listen and grade them. And you can see the feedback that I'm, I'm highlighting, okay? Some of the students got less, six out of 10. This student, he, he, he only, he didn't use the speaker notes. It was his first time. He didn't quite understand what to do. Um, but the second time he did much better. Now. This student emailed me, Kaylee, and she said, please don't let anybody see my presentation. I don't feel good. So I went to action, and now I'm gonna activate her response. Whoop, there it's active, but she does not want anyone to see it. So I'm gonna go back and hide the response. So, and I wanna tell you that the first time these students did their presentations, one of my students on her picture, she she put her, she put like contact me at, and she put her personal information. So I went and I was able to edit it. Um, so when you're watching the presentations, I'm just gonna show you for an example with Sophie, you saw Sophie already. There's an edit button right here and I can días, edit. Okay, I'm gonna pause that. So I can edit. Um, so if I don't, if she puts a title, I don't appreciate, I can edit it. Um, so anyways, that's all I'm going to say. I was able to edit one of my students pieces of uh, their presentation. So let's go back to the presentation again. So we are on step five. You are going to provide your students a listening activity now that they're all corrected and you've hidden any presentations that you don't want students to see or they don't want to have seen. So here is my listening activity. And this was 
an assignment for my students. Um, they had to listen to six different classmates. So as they listened to their classmates, they had to write their name and that's a point. And by the way, there's five boxes across, six presentations, that's 30 points. That's how I grade this. And um, what's nice is the first two boxes are very easy. You write their name and you check mark if they use the transition words to start with right now to conclude. And then um, I want to see that they were able to write, uh, for example, the question is que ropa prefiere. That's in the, the second um, slide. I talk about what clothes I prefer. So, you know, prefiere los vestidos. I'd be fine if they only had los vestidos. And then que es su ropa favorita. You know, I would, I'd be fine if it was just le gustan los jeans. Um, but some, you'll find your more advanced students will fill out more information. But I'm just hoping that they can answer the question. And again, I'm presenting in first person. They are listening and writing the answer in third person. Um, um, so I might say, mi tienda favorita is the Banana Republic, but they're responding in third person, su tienda favorita es. So this is a great way to work on conjugating verbs without the kids really thinking about it in a natural way. Um, so again, um, the goal is to have our students present on Flipgrid. And by providing them language frames, you're supporting them and giving them your scaffolding, you're giving them confidence because they know that they are using correct language. You correct it in the first place. It's okay if they read their notes because at least they're speaking correctly. And then when your students are listening, they're listening to overall good uh, uh, language, okay? Because we do wanna practice um, with correct structures. And um, again, it's okay if we make an occasional mistake. Okay, so that was step five. Step six is you're going to grade the listening activity. And as I stated earlier, it's not hard to do because I look at the 30 boxes and I just tally it up. If they don't use a complete sentence on one of the questions, I might take off half a point. I'll leave that up to you. So, um, I just want to go over our objectives today. Please understand how important it is for you to, to work as a facilitator. You're the coach. Provide them lots of practice. Give them feedback. And um, go with small steps, right? Small steps. Our ultimate goal is that our students will use Flipgrid to post presentations about themselves and that our students will be able to view each other's presentations. I highly recommend you create some presentations as well so they get to know you in this online learning community. Um, and, and that way you will foster um, a, a real uh, welcoming environment. And then finally, I'm hoping that you can walk away knowing how to design and implement different practice using Quizlet, practice using the Google Slides template, the listening activities. All right. So um, with that said, if you did not have a chance to copy my uh, information, uh, here's the link. Please go to it and make a copy. I have um, given you the steps. I've given you uh, links that will take you to some of the presentations I've made and um, Quizlet activities. All right, so muchísimas gracias. Hopefully this was helpful. Have fun designing your own student presentation directions, template, templates, and listening activities or tweaking mine. Thank you. Thanks again.